sitting here with another house of mine book review. Today we're discussing Untamed, one of my favorite books in the series, also the longest book in the series, which is fantastic because the longer the book, the better it is. So, as discussed in the previous video, Zoe's very secluded. All her friends are mad at her thanks to the whole Stevie Ray, Lauren Blake thing, but it gets better in this book finally because something is at the house of night something is whispering sweet dark little words to the students and there's some very creepy birds in this book raven mockers i don't know blackbirds they're basically like crows but they don't have that white piece they're pitch black so z has this horse that she loves to visit when she's feeling stressed out or Said her name's Persephone. On the way back to the dining hall from thrashing said horse, <laughs> something wraps around her and she can feel the claws. She totally freaks out, but luckily, just in time, she comes to her senses, calls the element fire, and the thing flies away. When she goes to ask Damien, which is his element is air, to ask him, has he felt anything strange? And he basically gives her the cold shoulder because remember everyone's mad at her the entire nerd herd is anti z right now which is kind of messed up but that's okay <coughs> um we also meet james stark in this book so james stark if you know the name obviously we all know it from james dean's movie rebel without a cause that's where Stark got his name. I don't know if I mentioned this before, but when you're marked, you choose your name. Like Z was Zoe Montgomery before she was marked, then she chose to take her grandmother's name, so now she's Zoe Redbird. Much nicer surname if you ask me. So, basically she meets this guy, and he's the only vampire who doesn't have a cat as a familiar. Instead, he has this huge blonde Labrador named Duchess. She is adorable, but her size is closely compared to that of a bear. Big dog. <laughs> so after Z and her nerd herd have a little clash in the dining hall, she heads up back to her dorms where Aphrodite is waiting, saying, we need to talk because there's some bad shit going down. Basically, Aphrodite had this vision of Zoe dying. Two of them. And it's by telling her friends this, explaining to them that Z died in both visions because she was alone, because nobody was there to listen to her, that her friends finally say, we're sorry, we won't ever leave you again. Thank goodness, because the nerd her should be together. They're stronger together. Later we might lose another one, but again, topic for another time. So finally they get together and they try working out what's going on now. What to do about Nefret, who's actually a very bad person. And <laughs> Z explains that she couldn't tell them all these things because Nefret can basically read minds. So she could only trust Aphrodite because Aphrodite has learned how to shield her thoughts from Nefret. She's had to because she hid a lot of stuff from the professors and high priestess and that's just why. Sorry, ADD. <laughs> I'll try not to get distracted by it. My door is open because it's hot as hell in South Africa at the moment. We get rain, but it's still freaking hot. Can't wait for it to be winter. Winter's my favorite. Um, <coughs> let's get back to the book, shall we? And then they finally get it. They're like, okay, but we have our elements. Can't we kind of like use them to shield our thoughts? But then it's going to be obvious that they're hiding something. So she's like, don't shield it, just think about other stuff like twins, think about a shoe sale, Damien, who's the smart guy in the group, think about school. Yeah, think about school. They sit with another problem because in Chosen, Aphrodite stepped in for Stevie Ray as the earth element in the full moon circle castings and she can't do it anymore. As soon as she tries to light the green candle, something zaps her. It's like an electric shock. Yeah, that's how she explains it, an electric shock. And she's crying over it. She's asking Z for help because she had this. She had this thing that was 
making her being accepted again by the other kids at school because she's not the most popular girl anymore because he took that role over and Nick shows up she shows up before Aphrodite and Z so this will be the second time Zoe sees her but Aphrodite's losing her shit because remember she lost her mark so she's not a plaything anymore but Nyx, Nyx, uh, Nyx explains to her that she's still a daughter of night she's still hers she has her vision she is the prophetess and thanks to that you know the whole profiting stuff we get this very nice but very creepy poem that tells us about something bad that's going down and this is um one of the things that i really like from about the books from here on out is they use a lot of poetry to explain things that are coming like we get another poet laureate later on her name's Kremisha. she's so cool <coughs> if i remember the poem correctly it's ancient one sleeping waiting to arise when earth's power bleeds sacred red, the mark strikes true. Queen Kasai is dearly will devise. He shall be washed from his entombing bed. From the hands of the dead he is free. Terrible beating, monstrous sight. Ruled again they shall be. Women shall kneel to his dark might. Kelona's song sounds sweet. Every slaughter with cold intense i know <laughs> but um so colonna does come in in this book he is basically one badass fallen angel and he's such a bad guy in the beginning because he wants zoe he <laughs> needs zoe because zoe looks exactly like aya now aya was a maiden made out of earth she was created by the cherokee wise woman to entrap colonna like a gazillion years ago because he was raping women and as soon as they gave birth it, it would either be miscarriages, stillbirth or raven mockers you get where the birds are coming in don't you so it's super gross um, that's basically what Nefert's goal is though to raise Kelowna at some point in this book um, Stark's body also rejects the change and he unfortunately dies but right before he does, he kisses Z and says he wish he had more time with her. It's so sweet. At the end of the book, while they're doing this big circle to finally tell the school about Nefert and what she's been doing, Stevie Ray and a bunch of the other types of vampires are there as well. So they're basically trying to out Nefert. And it almost works, except that Nefert turns the whole thing around. So maybe now I can explain more about the other vampires. So basically, the blue crescent, it turns red. So they're a whole different breed of vampires. And when Stevie Ray got her humanity back, her tattoo extended. So she basically became the high priestess of the red fledglings. That's right, you still have to actually complete the change if you're a red fledgling and they show up and she tries to tell the kids look it's an effort she did this to me but remember that part in the poem where it says earth's power bleeds sacred red yeah stark does come back but z wasn't there when he woke up woke up yeah they had this little camera and thing in the morgue to watch him it was kind of morbid but she had feelings for this guy like right away, so she wanted to protect him. Now, his gift is he doesn't miss. He's an archer, and whatever he thinks about, his arrow will hit it. And while he's still under the influence of Neferet's power, because as soon as he woke up, she fed in some of her blood. These vampires do need blood. They can't survive without it. Whereas the fledglings and the professors and adult vamps with the blue marks, they only need it from time to time to not go crazy. Yeah. So, Nefer tells him, shoot Stevie Ray in the chest. Make Earth bleed. Remember, Stevie Ray's affinity is for Earth. So when Earth's power bleeds sacred red, 
the mark strike the tree. The mark strike is obviously also Aaron shot Stephen Ray. But Z is begging him, don't do it, don't do it. And he misses his mark on purpose because he was actually listening to Z. But unfortunately, when Stevie Ray starts bleeding, this piece of ground just starts shifting and it's by this old tree, like a very sacred tree. And all of a sudden, Kalona pops out of the ground. Now, it's obvious that his main weakness is earth. I mean, the Cherokee wise woman trapped him in it for a very long time, so he doesn't like earth. So he never really likes Stevie Ray in the books to come either. But luckily, you see, he emits this kind of powers. Like, everyone's just like, they don't want to stop looking at him. They want to fall to their knees and worship him because he's claiming he is Arabus. Remember, I told you Arabus is Nix's consort. And Nefert's saying some bullshit that she is Nix and reincarnate. How did these people fall for this? I mean, hello? So, well, most of the kids are like, huh? You know? Zoe and her circle, and a bunch of kids that wanted to escape with them, including Eric Knight. Yeah, he came back to be the drama professor. That was awkward as hell. Um, they managed to escape, taking all their cats, because cats, remember, big girl in House of Mine, Duchess, Jack, which uh, he came in and betrayed, I'm sorry I forgot to mention him, he's Damien's boyfriend, he's adorable, his name is Jack Twist. Um, they all managed to escape to the tunnels where Stevie Ray and the Red Fledglings have been living. <coughs> and, <coughs> I'm sorry. Those tunnels play a big role in the next book. We also meet some nuns in this book. Um, you'd think there would be some controversy between, I mean, vampires and nuns. But the main pony, <laughs> nun, Sister Mary Angela actually helped Z. Because her gran was actually in a pretty bad accident in this book. It wasn't avoided because Aphrodite couldn't see it in time. And the nun was looking after her, um, made sure she's safe so that the raven mockers can't get her. And they play a huge role in the next book. I mean, these nuns kick some ass and take some names. Just trust me about that. But a lot of shit's going to happen. Um, I think in the next book, Heath comes back in. Yeah, Heath, mm, joy to the world. Z and Eric do make up for... I think it's one book, it doesn't last very long. But he does turn into kind of a douchebag, Eric, if I'm being quite honest. Like, he's hot as hell, but dude, let's let's stick with Team Stark. You can even like Heath if you want to, but don't stick with Eric. But that's all for me for this week, guys. This is a bit longer video than the previous ones, but it's my favorite book in the series. It's really, really good. Please join me next week in discussing Hunted. The next book in the series and don't forget to stake that like button subscribe and leave a comment down below bye guys